Welcome to New Zealand's Biggest Gap Year, an epic challenge that my partner Laura and I decided to tackle a few years back. The challenge, 365 activities all around New Zealand in 365 days. And today, well, it's a little bit more of a mellow day and we're going to check out the Opotiki Museum. Join me at the end of the video when I'm going to go over all the comments and questions you guys had the first time we published it. Yes, unfortunately, the weather is a bit miserable today, but luckily, even in a small town like a Portiki, there is an indoor activity to do. The museum keeper is quick to tell us the story of the building itself. It's actually an old bus station that they have just recently taken over and they're actually very proud of the fact that they've successfully filled it up. They actually had to find quite a lot of showcase to make because, well, a bus station is actually quite gigantic and the original building for the Opotiki Museum was much smaller. This used to be a TV. If I was a kid in the 1990s, I would definitely want one of those. The ground floor is full of relics from the past. Looks like an uncomfortable saddle. Can you imagine sitting on that? The center of the ground floor is full of old farming equipment dating back to over a hundred years, as well as loads of really old tools. Do you remember I turned um, wash gun poles when I took yeah. you on one of those? Oh, yes. Except for you want to be smaller than this one. Wow, Why that's what she said. always <laughs> A really cool feature of the ground floor in particular is that it's lined with all these mock-ups of old shops and services that used to be around a portiki. For example, there's the hospital, there's the dairy, which in New Zealand is the word for the convenience store, there's the wool shed, the barbers, the sawmill, so many different things absolutely packed with old trinkets and tools that were used in these shops. The barbershop of a portiki. I've barbershop from it will be known from the stairs, the barbershop of Apotiki. <laughs> will there be some bears in Apotiki at some point? <laughs> it really looks like the rain is bringing out the sassiest of all the Loras. But we are now making our way all the way to the top because yes, there is a second level of this museum where we find a bunch of maps. I found a treasure map. So it looks like it's not today that we're gonna go on a great adventure to find a hidden treasure, but we keep on moving around the museum. The top level have heaps of Maori artifacts as well as early settlers and a spot a piano. Drop the mic. Boom. Aside from that, there is something really cool on the top level. There is some little alcove that offers us a window into Opotiki through the ages. It's really nice. Who is that? That is a very weird ass living room with a lot of really weird stuff. <laughs> and we can't even walk around. I actually knew loads of people back at home who had heart, like rocking horses. Where are you from? <laughs> These little windows give you an insight into the different stages of the early pioneers, from the immigration vessels to the whalers' cabins, the old pubs, the Victorian bedrooms, even an old school, which I'm really interested in. Settlers' school. I want to go to early settlers' school. <laughs> There's really something fun to see in every single one of these rooms. But on this top floor, it's not just about these little rooms. There's also a huge Maori exhibition, which unfortunately we can't film, but there's loads of different Maori artifacts, carvings, weapons, and it's really awesome to check out for yourself. The final room that we're checking out is sort of like a war memorial. Not only is it dedicated to the world wars, but also some local wars as well. There's loads of different weapons on display, both Maori and European, as well as photos of locals that have fallen in battle. It's a humbling end to a really good and cheap activity that you can do indoors on a rainy day in Opotiki. So we're so glad we found it. Thank you very much, bye bye. Oh, it's almost too bright now. <laughs> the, sun has, the, the rain has passed, the sun is taking over. To 
tomorrow we are going to be going on a canoeing trip because we have met a guy who knew a guy with heaps of canoes and he's saying, oh well, uh, go join this guy for a canoe trip. It's been a bit of a last minute sort of organization, but it sounds like it's going to be pretty cool. So join us for a local tour of the Waiweka River tomorrow. All right, so definitely a bit more of a mellow day as mentioned in the intro of this video, but we still had a couple of comments. Uh, one very nice comment from Ryan Wilkes that says, you guys amaze me with the number of videos you're putting out and your blog is fantastic as well. I always end up there when I'm looking for recommendations for place to go. Well done, would be cool to meet you sometime. Um, yeah, well, so you can definitely join us on Patreon. So there's a link in the description of this video. And on Patreon, you will get access to a secret Facebook group where we hang out literally every single day to answer your question and all that. We do extra live sessions where we can interact kind of more one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we send you PDF guides and there's many, many, many more um, different uh, uh, perks for you to join us on Patreon if you're interested uh, to do that. We also have uh, your mom beep. I'm not going to finish this um, the, this username and say, this is cool. I live here. That's pretty awesome. I always like to hear from locals if they have some extra uh, recommendation. And that's basically what I ask. I ask for some other recommendation from there. And uh, they say that uh, some of the rail, uh, the mountain bike uh, tracks are pretty good as well. So here you go. Um, anyway, so yeah, if you want to uh, plan your trip to New Zealand with the experts of, uh, you know, Laura and I, you can join us during the NZ Travel Show happening at 8 a.m. New Zealand time every single Sunday and uh, yeah we spend one hour answering all your questions about traveling in New Zealand but if you can't make it you can always head to nzpocketguide.com which is what uh, Ryan was referring to before it is New Zealand's largest travel guide so if you check that out you'll find thousands and thousands of articles to help you plan the best trip ever to New Zealand in the meantime I wish you an awesome day and I'll see you in the next video